All right, we're going to tie a 20 inch stone, and I'm starting off with a size a 10 streamer hook with a 532nd tungsten bead. And I want to make this fly heavy, so I'm just going to add some wraps of lead wire here, maybe five to eight. And just break that off. And I'm just going to push that into the bead to get it stuck in there tight. I can smooth down this end section so it doesn't come back and shear my thread when I'm tying it in. All right, the thread that I'm going to use is a 140 olive, and I'm just going to get that in to wrap down my lead. And once the lead's good and good and snug, I can come back and just clean up my tag end. I'm going to tie this with goose by a tail, so I'll bring my thread down to the bend of the hook and just put in a thread ball behind there. Not a necessary step, but I do it just to give my tails more separation when I tie them in. And I do this with my uh, with all the flies that I tie with, with goose by it tails. So I'm going to take two meaty uh, biats here. This is a, a bigger fly, so I want the tail to be a representative of that. <clears throat> when you clip them off, again, they're going to want to lie in the same direction, so you put them back to back. Uh, and it creates that that V shape of the tail that you're looking for. So then I'll just take this and traditionally when I measure I measure against the the shank of the hook but I'm going to measure to the gap here. So I want it to be about a gap uh, gap space worth of length and I'm just going to put them one on either side. You can tie these in individually uh, but I'll put them one on either side of that thread ball in the shank and while I have two wraps, then you can start to adjust them to make sure they're sitting just how you want. Happy with them, I'm going to advance my, my thread. And I'm going to be adding body to this fly, so I don't mind that I wrap those goose uh, butt sections in. I'll bring it back to uh, the point of the hook there while tying my next material. And this will be the ribbing. And the ribbing that I'm going to use is a brown floss. It comes in four strands. I'm going to take two. I wet the ends just so that it gives me a better tie-in tie-in point. It puts those, uh, merges those two together and I'll just get it nice and wrapped in there. The majority of this fly is going to be peacock curl. So I'll take four strands or so of maybe five strands of peacock curl. I'll trim off the butt sections to give me a good again tie-in point. I'll put them right behind that lead and wrap it in there, make it nice and secure. I want this fly to have more body to it than it does right now, and you can see it has uh, almost no taper to it. So I'm going to take a dark dubbing material, and in this case, I've got some uh, brown dubbing lying around so I'm going to use that uh, to dub in my to dub in my taper so I'll just get that started on my thread and start to work on a bit of a taper here so that way when I wrap my peacock curl hopefully it matches that taper as well So I'll get that on. Maybe one more pinch should do it. And you'll notice I'm stopping short of the thorax. There's going to be a lot of material tied into that part so I'm not worried about building it up. Now I'm going to take my peacock curl and because I'm going to tie in ribbing I want them to be uh, opposite of one another so if I'm looking at the front of the fly here I'm going to tie these in counterclockwise. So I'm just bringing my wraps of peacock curl up over the body of this fly. They're going to want to twist as you do so so I'm untwisting them each time to give me better coverage. 
I'll bring them up to my thorax and I'm going to go beyond my thread so that I can wrap it around and secure the thread wraps that way. If you just try to tie it in, you're going to start to unravel your, your peacock curl because you're going to be tying in, um, unwinding it. <clears throat> now I'm going to take my floss and I'm going to make a couple of twists here. I don't want the full width of the floss to be used uh, and it's going to want to untwist as I do this. So make a couple of twists and now I can wrap this in a clockwise motion just bringing it up through the body of my fly and to the thorax and then I can tie that in and take the rest of that off and I'm going to back my thread to the point where I want my thorax to start and I'm going to use my bead head as kind of a measure here and I'm going to say I want about two bead heads worth of width of a thorax. The wing casing for this is a turkey feather so I'm going to take off maybe a I don't know maybe a half inch section of the peacock feather or the uh, turkey feather and there's two sides the tips are more supple and the, the base becomes rigid. I'm going to tie this in by the tips but I'm going to take a, a straight cut through to give me that and it's always going to want to compress a little, so I'm t taking pr probably more than I more than I need, knowing that when I fold it over, it's going to be smaller than that width. So I'm just taking with one thread wrap, make sure that it's situated right on top of the fly, so that when I pull it over, it's going to give me even coverage over the top. So happy with this, I'm going to take my next. Uh, material and that's going to be my legs. You can use Hungarian uh, partridge, you can use any leg material if you have a preference. I like uh, hen. I just think I, I use this with my wet flies. I just think it gives it uh, good movement for the legs. So I'm going to take that and clean off the underside of it. And I'm going to leave this relatively long. Any additional fibers that I have. I'm going to try to fold back in and really make this buggy. So I've got my my leg there, I'm going to or my feather there, I'm going to tie it in by the tip. So I'm going to set this on top and give it some wraps and get it in there. And I'm not even going to bother to cut the tip. I'm just going to tie that right in. Now for the thorax, I'm going to use a natural hairs dubbing and so I'm just taking my wax here I'm going to wax the thread and this is a, a blend that I put together myself so it's uh, it's real real fibery that's a word alright so I got it on the <clears throat> on the thread and I'm just going to start to bring this through the thorax and then I'm going to take my my legs and I'm just going to bring them over the top and you can see that it goes to about the eye of the hook. I'm just going to fold those back under and tie those in. And You can see how that looks from the top. Then I can take my wing casing and bring that over and tie that in as well. and you can see how it creates those legs. So two wraps on top, two wraps underneath. I can come back through and trim that off. And I'm going to put a slight collar on this. I'm going to take my I'm going to take my wax again and just put a touch of that on there and I'm going to take my natural hairs dubbing and put a band of that on my thread and then just wrap it up a couple of turns with my whip finisher here and I'll be all set
And then you can start to play with the legs so they sit just how you want them. Real big, real heavy pattern. Good as kind of a point, point fly if you're going to trail something smaller behind it. And that is a 20 inch stone.